In this class, we're going to take a look at simplifying algebraic expressions, which really just means combining the like terms. And the like terms are just the terms which are alike. So the x's, the numbers, the square root of twos, all the things that look the same you can combine, and that is what we call simplifying the expression. So we've got these different formats of examples here, but essentially the way that we're going to simplify these is the same in each one. We're just going to look for things that look the same, the like terms, and combine them. So we'll start with this guy here. So notice we've got two x terms and then a number term. Just remember that in algebraic expressions, we call each of the each of the, the bits, each of the parts, the bits that are separated by the plus or the minus, a term. So that's a term, that's a term, that's a term. So we're adding these three terms in this case. In this one, we've got four terms. Two of them are number terms. Two of them are algebraic, well, variable terms, algebraic terms. Here, we're gonna combine the two like terms, which are the x's. So this is one x. Remember, if an x is just on its own, it means like one x. Any variable on its own means like one times that variable. So we've got one x plus two x. So we just add those together to get three x. We can't combine the three with anything because it's a different thing. It's a number term. So we just get three x plus three. And that's that expression fully simplified. That's all we have to do. Taking a look at this guy, so just scanning across, we see we've got an x term here, we've got an x term here. It doesn't matter if they're separated by another number, we're not interested in combining them with this number. So for this one, the two number terms are positive six and minus three, and the two variable terms are this guy here, the two x and the four x. So they're the ones that we're gonna to combine together. So we've got four x minus two x, which is gonna give us positive 2x, so just 4 minus 2, and then we've got 6 minus 3 to give us positive 3. So when we're writing our final answer, we always put the x term first and then the number term. If there was like an x squared and an x and a number, you would put the squared term first, then the x term and then the number. So that, we call that descending powers of x or descending powers of the variable, and that's just the format that, that we look for. If you did write this one the wrong way around, if you wrote that as three plus three x, it's not terrible, it's not quite right, it's kind of grammatically wrong, I guess, um, but it's still, these guys are the same thing, it's just that we prefer to have it in this format. Okay, so turning to the third example, just gonna do the same thing, we're scanning along, we're seeing we've got a two x and then a minus nine x, so if we combine those, two minus nine is minus seven, x, that's gone into the negatives, and then for the numbers, 5 minus 2 is positive 3. So what I just said a moment ago about generally writing them in these formats with an x term and then the descending power, so the x term and the number term, that is true. The only exception to that would be if you've got a negative here, we tend to not like to have negatives on the left hand side. So if you've got a negative like hanging out the left hand side, as we sometimes call it, we don't like that, so we tend to spin that around and put the positive three first, which we can just write as three. You don't need to put the positive there. If it's a positive first, you just leave it as like three, and then minus seven x. So again, these two are the same thing, just written in a different order, but that order here has been dictated by this negative. So again, if you wrote it like that, you probably wouldn't lose marks, it's not wrong, unless your teacher was specifically testing that you know how to turn it into this form, then these guys are the same. So if you went from there to there, or from there to there, you have simplified the expression. It's just that this is our preferred form. This is the, the grammatically correct form. It's a little bit like in English, like when you write something which is kind of, makes sense, but it's not grammatically maybe perfect. This is like math grammar. Okay, right, so the final one. Slightly different looking expression. We've got some squares in there, but it doesn't matter. These are the like terms, so they're alike. They're both squares. Five of them plus three of them gives us eight of them. So eight x squared minus four. No negative here, so we don't need to spin it around. That's just the, the final answer for that one. So simplifying algebraic expressions just everywhere in math. So you've got to get really comfortable with this. If you're doing any kind of course that's got algebra in it, um, which pretty much most math courses do, then this is really a core skill. 
So you're going to want to practice this to the point where it just flows in the same way that if you're writing in English, your kind of words flow. Uh, you don't really want to be thinking about this every time because you're going to have to do this so many times in so many different types of question and in so many different types of math class. Um, but it doesn't take too many practice questions to get a feel for these. The more difficult scenarios, dealing with sort of negatives and things like that, um, once you've seen that a few times, then you'll, you'll know what to do. So practice some of these, but don't go crazy with them because you're going to end up seeing so many of them in different formats anyway that you're, you're going to get practice. But you want to at least get to the point where you know what's going on, make sure this all makes sense to you, and then practice enough questions just to know that you can actually replicate the, the technique.